Well, let's get into our conversation for today. Nigeria's Africa's largest economy has been grappling with persistent high inflation rate in recent times. As of March 2024, the country's inflation rate stood at 33.2%, the highest in a decade. This economic challenge has been exacerbated by various macroeconomic factors, including rising food prices, currency devaluation, and fuel subsidy removal. In response to this uh, crisis, the federal government you know, has been implementing a series of measures aimed at controlling inflation and stabilizing the economy. But how close is the federal government getting at taming inflation? Well, that's our focus in this conversation. And we just heard, of course, uh, April inflation has jacked up to 36%. Well, let's get talking now. I've been joined by the Director General, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Dr. Chinyere Halmona. She joins me virtually now. Thank you for joining us, Doctor. We appreciate you for your time. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, before I take you on the conversation for the day, let's have your take on the cybersecurity level set at 0.5%. You know, there are arguments for and against particularly the timing and why this should completely be abolished. I understand the president has mandated the CBN to put a hold on the implementation already, but what's your position on the levy? So um, we are glad that the president has suspended the levy because we felt that the levy was ill-timed. Not just was it ill-timed, it was also in terms of the concepts of this levy, um, it was a bit questionable why we should um, begin to pay levy for um, cyber security. As important as that is, um, we, are, we from the organized private sector are concerned that we have to pay levy for everything. So it will appear that as difficult as we are today with the, you just talked about the inflation um, rates and how difficult the economy has been for businesses that were being um, burdened by additional taxes, additional levies. We feel that government should have a strategy or a way to raise funds or to raise um, revenue to cover a key aspect of running government. So for the private sector, we felt that this was um, not good enough. We had gone through removal of first subsidy um, and the attendant rise in prices and cost of living and doing business. We have also, um, we are weathering the storm of um, forex fluctuations, and we didn't think that adding another levy was the best thing to do. Also, if you think about it, we well, we have always talked about having um, the unbanked. We need to get more people on, online banking. And when you have all of these additional um, charges, then you're probably discouraging people from from banking. Um, so we have to think about, we need to think about it very broadly. But I must say that for the private sector as well, we believe that when you have to um, have some of these policies, there's a need to have a conversation with the organized private sector. We are not, you know, in any call, any discussion with government. We just saw um, this levy. We need to discourage arbitrary charges to the organized private sector. Um, and ensure that we can allow the organized private sector to do business um, and remove some of the encumbrances, some of the um, difficulties and challenges that the business sector is facing. And so we felt um, from the get-go that this, this um, levy wasn't a good idea and the timing was, of course, very poor. Just a follow-up question. I mean, like you said, uh, uh, one of the statements by the SCCI there is, is that the government needs to withdraw it and like you just confirm it now to give room for consultations with critical stakeholders. And talking about consultation, what are your recommendations when it comes to engaging with these uh, stakeholders, especially, uh, you know, someone like you? Well, we believe that at the Chamber we have an open line of communication with different um, levels of government. And we are always open to um, sit around the table and discuss issues relating to the private sector. We are willing to give governments um, our recommendation, and we always do um, on you know how things can be better accommodated. I mean, if we had a, a whiff of this levy and we had conversations, 
and we won't be at a position where we are putting out the guideline for this levy um, and all the challenges around it, and then we're withdrawing the few days later, which I think is a good thing that we're withdrawing it. But the point is that we should have had a dialogue um, before the levy was put out. Also, you know that the committee, the presidential committee um, for fiscal policy and tax reform is about to put um, on the table their recommendations and their proposals to harmonize taxes or streamline and you know remove the burden on the private sector so that we can do business. Therefore, it is important, like we did mention in that um, um, in that media statement, that we harmonize you know what is coming up from that committee because a lot of work has gone into um, coming up with the recommendations that they had. Mm. Let's get into our main conversation for the day, which is about inflation. The federal government is targeting 21% inflation rate in the 2024 fiscal year. Half of the year is almost here and gone. You know, how far or closer or close is the federal government in the fight against inflation rate? Uh, Nigeria's inflation rate just jerked up by to 33.69% in the month of April compared to what you had in March. What's your position on that? So the fight against the rising inflation is an uphill task, really, because we need to pay attention to the fundamentals. There are so many things. So when you think about it, the, the, the big part of this inflation rise is the rising cost of food. Um, and if that isn't tackled from the, from the roots, then we'll just be dealing with symptoms. Cost of food items are rising because of insecurity. Farmers can go to farm because of lack of infrastructure, even when they do go to farm, to move the items from the farm. In terms of logistics, that's all, like the, the value chain is broken. Um, and if we're not fixing the infrastructure, if we're not helping them to go back to the farm, if we're not um, even encouraging them with, um, a, a, apart from even moving it from the farm to the table, you also then have huge um, post-harvest losses because we're not able to um, harness um, the items that we produce and you know uh, secure them or um, preserve them. So we need to think about the whole agri um, sector and, and address the issues there. But also, apart from the agriculture, we also need to think about the production. Um, we can try to fight you know, inflation to go up, come down, go up, come down. We need to deal with the fundamentals. So we need to encourage this. Hello, doctor. And the cost of doing business is rising. Uh, the cost of doing business is rising, and um, the purchasing power of um, of the populace seems to be dwindling. Then there is a mismatch. It will be difficult to, to actually fight inflation. We need to deal with the root causes and, and try to address them. Mm. So in light of uh, the point you just made now, talk to us, you know, how do you think the federal government can build domestic capacity to mitigate the impact of these shocks on inflation and the overall economy? You just talked about the fact that farmers have not been able to you know, go to the farms, and which means that majorly the root cause of this inflation is food. Yes, it is. And and the um, agricultural value chain is, is quite broad. And um, there have been interventions and recommendations on what government could do to help farmers um, put food on the table. Uh, and part of it also is having the right framework whereby you, you're making it easy for business people within the agri sector to actually do business. So ease of doing business is something that we, we must continue to pay attention to so that the um, business people are not um, so overwhelmed with the problems, regulatory problems here and there. They're having to, um, to either build their own infrastructure or manage and maintain their own infrastructure and all that will add to the cost of doing business within any of the sectors at all. Um, so we need to pay attention to the sectors, the critical sectors um, that will um, support um, business production. Mm. I know some experts like you have called for structural reforms to address Nigeria's long-standing macro you know, economic changes or challenges. But do you think we've made any progress 
as regards these? And should this be a point of conversation at this time? I think it remains a point of conversation. I will keep talking about it until we deal with it fully. Um, in the last couple of months, there have been several um, guidelines and policies from government that I believe um, we, are, we are kind of going in the right direction. One of the things that we have uh, recommended even from the chamber is there needs to be a harmony between fiscal policy and uh, monetary policy. We see a lot of um, you know, activity within the monetary policy space. But we also need to have a proper handshake between um, both sides of, of the divide. I believe we're making progress. The progress is slow, but you would expect slow progress because we have um, um, things have degenerated over the last 10 years. So progress is expected to be slow. But progress we have we are making. Um, in terms of the inflation, if we can get up to the 21 um, planned or budgeted, that remains to be seen. But with the current inflation rate, it tells us that we're still pushing upwards rather than downwards, and we need to deal with the fundamentals, like I said earlier. Mm. What's your outlook for the next MPC meeting to hold later this month? How effective uh, do you think the Central Bank of Nigeria's monetary policy tools have been in curbing inflation and what more can be done to strengthen their impacts on the economy? Well, the, um, with the past MPCs, we've had um, the rates keep pushing up. The question to ask is, in most climates, so if you have increased rates, um, you should same inflation, but it hasn't worked well because we haven't managed to do both incre increase rate, but also do other things that will affect um, production, like I keep saying. Um, I believe that we need to think of how do we ensure, I think CBN needs to think, how do we ensure that we have um, funds for businesses that want to expand, businesses that want to export, businesses that want to increase um, their, their uh, production capacity. How do we ensure that we have funds going in the fiscal sector? If you look at all the rate increases, it reduces the margin of, um, of the bank's ability to lend to the real sector. So we need to watch, watch that so that banks can actually be encouraged in one way or other to lend to the real sector. That's the only way the sector can um, can grow. That's the only way the sector can pro provide jobs um, and then be able to effectively tame inflation. Mm. All right. Finally, before I let you go, we've seen the fallout from the ongoing economic reforms and their impact on the economy. From the Chamber's point of view, what are your recommendations for managing the expected impact of these reforms? Um, so one thing that needs to happen with the reforms, I, I see um, there has to be a close um, engagement with the private sector. There has to be um, sufficient sensitization. It's one thing to have great reform ideas and initiatives, but if um, there isn't um, good reception of the reform agenda, then it may be derailed. So it's important for us to carry the you know populace along, carry um, the private sector along, so that they understand the reforms, they know what their part would be in the reforms. The other thing I, I, I believe is um, you can put great ideas on the table, but if we don't implement them properly, then there's a problem as well. And that's what we've seen in this nation that we always have great recommendations from you know experts, we have economists, we have people who have great ideas, but then. Um, policies are made, but implementation will always fail at the point of implementation. Therefore, I will um, recommend that you know government will consider the resources required to implement every reform initiative that's on the table. Um, the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reform, um, we've come up with great um, recommendation on how to um, you know how to reform the you know, sector, how to create opportunities for, for revenue streams, for government, my recommendation will be, please implement. Implement those recommendations and we'll see things begin to change. Mm. Well, implementation indeed is key 
to having desired results. Thank you for your great analysis as always, Dr. Chinyere Amona, uh, DG LCC. I thank you for your time on the program. Have a great day. Thank you for having me. Bye.